Today is part two of our coronavirus series, Fact versus Fiction, where each day we bring in an expert to break down the biggest misconceptions about the deadly virus plaguing our nation. Yeah, joining us today to set the record straight on the risks and complications associated with coronavirus is family physician, Dr. Jennifer Caudill. Thank you so much for coming on, we do appreciate it. Uh, let's start with this one, Fact or Fiction, COVID-19 patients may develop heart problems and blood clots. This is actually fact. Um, this is something that we are learning in the in the last few weeks or so. We're learning things every day about coronavirus and the symptoms it can cause. Some there are some case reports of patients having uh, things like blood clots, not only in the heart or the lungs, but other organs as well, and even the blood vessels. We think that this may have something to do with inflammation that happens in the body, but there are also other uh, heart conditions that have been associated or that have occurred with coronavirus infection. So this is fact. Dr. Caudill, what about this one? Your lungs will be permanently damaged even in mild cases. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Well, it's possible, but not necessarily. So I'd say possibly, but not necessarily. You know, um, whether your lungs are damaged for the long term from this condition really depends on a number of things. How severe your coronavirus infection is in the first place, uh, the type of treatment that you receive and how soon you receive that treatment, and also your own underlying conditions, your own lung health and things like that. These are all the factors that really will go into how well you do after you recover from illness, uh, regardless of whether your illness was severe or mild. In fact or fiction, you can be infected for two weeks with no symptoms at all. Mm, yeah, that's actually possible, okay? So we know that there are a number of people that are asymptomatic, which means they have no symptoms, but they've been infected with coronavirus and they can possibly spread it to others. Um, usually t symptoms come between two and 14 days of becoming infected, but it's possible to not have symptoms at all. So, so yeah, this, this actually can happen. How about this one? Coronavirus patients will experience a drowning sensation. This is another one that's possible, uh, but it's not necessarily the case. Uh, again, this really depends on the severity of symptoms that you have and the types of symptoms that you have. You know, not everybody experiences very severe lung symptoms, though we know some do. And we know things like pneumonia or ARDS uh, or respiratory distress, and there can be sort of consequences in, in coronavirus cases. So yes, there are some people that will feel that way, but not necessarily everyone will. In fact or fiction, COVID-19 patients can experience confusion, seizures, or even stroke. Yeah, this is actually fact. This is something, an, another sort of set of symptoms that we've been learning about in the last few weeks. Once again, I keep saying that we, we're learning things every single day about this condition. There have been case reports of patients with COVID also having neurological symptoms, things that you just mentioned, like seizures, headaches, dizziness, confusion, uh, even acute cerebrovascular problems and others as well. So this is a fact and we have found some patients having neurological symptoms uh, that are also infected with COVID. Okay, next one is if I recover from COVID-19, I'll develop immunity. Is that fact or fiction? Well, I'd say most likely fact. It's pretty well accepted that you know, when you get COVID and you recover from it, um, you have antibodies to it. And we pretty much suspect that you're going to have some protection uh, or some immunity towards the coronavirus after recovering from the disease. The question, however, is how much immunity we are going to have and for how long that immunity will last. So those are the variables that we're really waiting to see um, you know, as time goes on. Again, we still have a lot to learn and hopefully we'll learn more about this because as we know, things like the antibody tests and things like that um, you know, are, are very, very very important for uh, you know our recovery as a society, but um, you know yeah, it's, a, it's we we do yeah. suspect some immunity. How about this one? You hear a lot of people saying, if you have coronavirus, you're going to know it, you're going to feel it. Mm, that's another one. Not necessarily. I mean, very likely. Look, I have patients that have and have had coronavirus and they are very, very ill. Uh, however, we know once again that there are a number of patients that are asymptomatic or that have only mild symptoms, maybe just a stuffy nose or a mild cough or things like that. Uh, and, and may have had the condition or coronavirus rather and didn't even know that they had it. So you won't you, you may not necessarily know this, especially if you have mild disease or if you're one of those who are asymptomatic. Dr. Jennifer Caudill, thank you so much for that information. We appreciate it. Thank you. And be sure to tune in tomorrow for part three of our Fact versus Fiction series. We'll break down how the virus actually spreads and how you can prevent it.